So Knowledge Systems for Sustainability is an international collaborative made up of a number of major partners who have an interest in and capabilities that are relevant for that challenge. In other words, knowing better what kind of real benefits investments that are made in development actually create. So we are a group of major players who are committed to receiving the information from the experiments we do in development in a more systematic way and in leveraging um, very large investments made in global monitoring and analytics into development challenges towards food security for all within long-term safe space for the planet. Don't you think the donors have a pressure to, to roll up? From our point of view, we are um, interacting with a number of donors who are interested in modern approaches to project monitoring and evaluation. Um, we understand that the old model of a post hoc assessment is very insufficient. And frequently, those post hoc assessments only covered one aspect. Did we raise the yield of the crop, let's say, without understanding, well, did those increases in yield leave people better off. We assume they did, but I think any of us know that, that it's complicated. And so what we are finding is donors who are interested in modern approaches to project monitoring and evaluation and who also understand the need to create learning systems within projects as they're unfolding have an interest in these capabilities. Yeah, I would be interested to hear where the sort of the private business people sort of linkage it. Maybe you can give us an example. Any scan of um, the history of innovation shows that there's typically a spark or, or a, a, an opening that occurs often with public investment, but that to scale those benefits, that opportunity transitions into benefits for the private sector. So what we see is you can think about the transition of, let's say, um, weather information from um, a research mode, perhaps in the first half of the 20th century, to a multi-billion dollar industry with many different kinds of beneficial impacts, everything from aviation to investment. Um, as we mainstreamed um, the provision of weather information from public sector activities to the private sector. Now, there still are large public investments in something like weather, and there are large, many different ways the private sector can leverage those public sector investments towards value in a, in a for-profit mode. What's the outcome from your monitoring of the pickup of your recommendations? What has been very exciting, and I think has been done extremely well, it's really unprecedented in my experience, is that while that launch of the Commission's recommendation was the wrap-up of one part of the process, it was very intentionally the beginning of another. And that really was the mobilization of a number of global communities into action around each of those recommendations. So what has happened since is very exciting, I think. Each policy, each recommendation has catalyzed a community. And yet those communities are moving forward together. So think about the issue of waste in food systems. It's an issue everywhere on Earth. It's an issue in the developing world, both pre-harvest and post-harvest, as well as post farm gate into retail, but it's also a huge issue in the, develop, in the developed world. So what I've seen since a recommendation focused on waste has come forward is a, a clear recognition in a wide array of discussions where waste is important that we really can't talk about healthy, healthier food systems in the future without thinking about waste. Okay, Molly. Just go back to the to our annual General Assembly a year ago where your colleague from CCAS, uh, Sonia Vermoulin, presented to, to the people there, uh, to the donors primarily, um, the, the initial findings. And it, I remember that Nikita Erickson Hamel, the uh, Canadian CETA focal point, had pointed out that the recommendations were a little bit vague, to say the least. And um, he uh, then recommended for the recommendations to maybe 
make a logic step and rather suggest to donors what they shouldn't do. Can you maybe comment on that a little bit? Since March of 2012, when this, rec when, when this bundle of recommendations was announced, um, a number of us aren't, it's not about whether we will do it, we are doing, we are taking action under these recommendations. What we have done, for example, I'll pick recommendation number seven because I'm involved with that, but also the, the recommendation focused on intensified productivity within planetary boundaries is another good example where donors are taking existing investments, each one of which has a value, and coming together in new kinds of partnerships, for example, across the public-private boundary, across government. Um, beyond development organizations to recognize clear alignment and sometimes even overlap of action. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you.